Now, aircraft accident investigator Fahad Masoud joins me now live from Islamabad. Uh, Fahad, good to have you on the program. Why do you think this airline went down? Uh, as an accident investigator, this is too early to say anything about how or uh, what happened in the aircraft. But what I can really point my finger at are a few uh, hypotheses, possibilities as we call them. One, um, it can be an act of sabotage. We cannot rule that out. Um, there can be a possibility of a, a runaway trim or a horizontal stabilizer malfunction, which has happened in the, in the past as well. Although this aircraft is not a 737 MAX, it is a 737-526 year old in airframe. It consists of or has a lot of uh, positivities attached with it. Being there since 1960s has flown across the world umpteenth number of hours. But um, what can really happen in such a circumstance where an aircraft plummets from 10,000 feet till sea level within a matter of a minute or so is uh, heartbreaking overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is all. Fahad, let me just jump in. The reporter uh, we have, uh, Vandana, speaking to us from Jakarta, she says it's rainy season. Could that have been uh, an influence and impacted at all? Uh, weather conditions are always plausible. Uh, airframe malfunctions have happened before. You look at the Alaskan Airline Flight 261 or the Intercontinental uh, Flight uh, 7425, uh, in which there was uh, structural failures due to which the aircraft plummeted. Although the black box found, or as the technical phrase for it is, uh, the FDCVR, the Flight Data uh, Cockpit Voice Recorder, will give us a lot of clarity of when, what went on in those final few uh, moments of uh, this air crash taking place. So weather can be a critical phenomenon. I tend to agree with you on that. And uh, just very quickly, this is another Boeing going down. What does this do now for the image of Boeing, given the history of the 737 MAX? And this is not a 737 MAX. We know that. Yes, uh, well, uh, Boeing has uh, recovered to a degree from those two 737 MAX crashes that took place uh, in, once again, Lion Air and Ethiopian Air some time back. Uh, but the issue at hand, which is most critical for us to understand, is um, the worst thing that can happen in an air crash is the loss of repute of a specific aircraft manufacturer or an airline. It takes a lot of time to recover uh, that uh, image or the name that goes along with it. Uh, but rest assured, um, it is a very different aircraft from the 737 MAX, mm -hmm. so which this, well disconnects the two air crashes. For a con common man to understand, it's still a Boeing, but uh, for the technical people who are from the aviation industry, in my opinion, it won't take uh, too much of a hit. But the consumers, the passengers who are flying Boeing as a name is once again going to take a hit. And just very quickly, two, two words, um, Fahad. If the black box has fallen in the sea, how long and how difficult will it be to get that? Days, weeks? Um, not really. There is a beacon that is uh, on the FDCVR or the black box, which is uh, emanating a pulse uh, for uh, 24 to 48 hours. Uh, it can be found on, um, through that. It's called an ELT, electronic locator uh, beacon, uh, which relates to a specific frequency, conventionally an emergency one, which is 1 to 1 1.5. Okay. Uh, kilohertz or 243 megahertz, either of the two. So it will be found sooner, in my opinion, than later. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Fahad Masood, aircraft accident investigator, speaking to us from Islamabad.